Good morning, afternoon, or evening, and welcome to another episode of Trust the Tape. I'm Jeff Cavanaugh alongside Dane Brugler, and we are very sorry that it's been a couple minutes since your last Trust the Tape podcast dropped. Massive contract disputes inside the building. Dane lost a leg. Uh, we just had a lot going on, but we're here. Yeah, we're it's the nature of the season. It's busy. Uh, a lot going on. Evaluate these prospects. Got to know the draft. Uh, but I think we're in good shape here. Uh you, have, you feel good about uh, who these players are? I'm making progress, Dane. Good. You feel good about who these players are. I, I feel, feel good, good about who about 105 of them are. Nice. 105, 110. That's good. And yeah, just like 140 to go in the next three, four weeks. Before we really, really dive into some of these uh, team-by-team needs, anybody that maybe surprised you that you've taken a look at the last uh, last few weeks that maybe you... You know, obviously you have some preconceived, uh, uh, you know, perceptions about these players uh, just based on your own viewing. Oh, no, not me, no. Or, no, I never do. No, I just go in, eyes wide open. Yep. Anybody surprise you compared to maybe what you thought going in or, you know, positive or negative? Uh, how about Florida man? Is it Jachai or Jakai? Jakai Polite, Jachai yeah. Polite. Jakai Polite. Okay, so I didn't watch him before the combine. Mm-hmm. I just saw the combine. Mm-hmm. And I saw a guy who looked overweight and didn't look like a good athlete. And then in the interviews, I was like, "Man, I won't want. I wouldn't want that guy on my team." Then I watched him play yeah. in pads, right? And I meant, I went, "Oh, I'd that, really like to have him on my team." That, Holy that's cow, why he's good. That's why he's been talked about as a top fifteen player up until the combine, basically. <laughs> yeah, really, really interesting. Yeah. Uh, Penn State corner. I'm not going to be able to say his name, so you have to. Uh, or, Ronnie, or, or a one way or, or, or a runway. Yeah. Yeah. However you want to say it. Mm-hmm. I love him. He's awesome. Mm-hmm. Sean Bunting, cornerback. Bunting's Central awesome. Michigan. Whoa, we'll, whoa, whoa. we'll agree on Bunting. Why are you hating him? A Penn state guy. Uh, he's a solid. I think he's a late third, early fourth. Oh, dang. Uh, he's solid. Oh no. I, I mean, I like my guys to be able to tackle. Um, okay. So you got greedy Williams in the fourth. He could tackle better or greedy can tackle better in Penn state. They're both not interested. <laughs> no, both not terribly I, interested. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm just uh, the Penn State player. I'm here I, to cover. He's not a playmaker to me. I'm here to know. cover. I, see, I don't even think he's a great cover guy, but I, wow, I, I think dang. he's solid. I think his size makes up for some. Um, I think he's solid. I think, but I don't know. I don't see a. All right, I'm going to move him down two rounds <laughs> just because I trust you. <laughs> no, no, no. Trust. No, that's uh, cool. We need to disagree on some of these guys. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, Jachai Polite's going to be a difficult conversation. Sean Bunting's awesome. Uh, Central Michigan. He's a guy who I really knew nothing about him. Uh, because I, you know, when it comes to MAC players, I really don't scout. Oh, you're not in on the MAC underclassmen. Mm. You know, during the season, I focus on the seniors. And well, I'll tell you this: on his tape, he looks offended if a receiver gets off the line of scrimmage. Yeah, like it's awesome. Mm-hmm. He is the most physical press corner guy I've seen this year by far. Which is like, no, you're not getting off the line. Even if my team is in zone and playing off right. coverage, I'm playing press man, and we're gonna wrestle. And if you have an outside release, you're going out of bounds. <laughs> and an inside release, we're going to wrestle. He, he'll he run better routes than the re- receiver does. I mean, he he does a really nice job shadowing coverage and puts himself in position to make plays. I, you know, in my top 100 that I released a couple weeks ago, I had him like 81 or something. And like more I got into it, I was like, that's not high enough. This guy's a top 50 player. So, I mean, he's, he's going to go somewhere in the top 50 picks, in my opinion. He's my fourth corner. I, that's not crazy. I mean, let me see where my corners are. Uh, I go DeAndre Baker, Byron Murphy, Greedy Williams, Bunting. I'm sorry, say that again now. I go DeAndre Baker, okay. Byron Murphy, uh-huh. Greedy Williams, okay. our guy Bunting. Um, I think I have Bunting sixth corner. Um, the only two corners I have ahead that you didn't were uh, Rocky Sin and Justin Lane. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I think we're in the same ballpark. I mean, I think that all those, I think the, those six players are all tif- top 50 picks. I think Julian Love from Notre Dame, he's also in that mix, top 50, top 60. Um, I, I think all all six of those, all seven of those players are, it's not a great corner class, but there's some corners in this in this class that can play. Uh, and your, uh, your San Diego State tight end, that was a great call yeah. by you. Warren. Holy cow. Kahale Warren. He's fun. Yeah, he is. For and a he, guy who apparently didn't play football until what, his senior year Played every sport possible except football until his senior year. And he looks good at it like he doesn't look like a guy who hasn't played football i, I was he can surprised block yeah. a little bit he, yeah, he, he, can. he can run routes a little bit yeah. the athleticism's awesome He'll yeah. go get the ball. and i think it's just the natural athlete in him you know like he's not the most refined route runner but he's pretty coordinated with his footwork and his routes you know like he's not a complete he doesn't look like a fish out of water out there like he knows what he's doing i mean 
you know, and he, I told this before, but, you know, just to get a glimpse of how raw he is as a football player, his first, when he, he walked on at San Diego State and the special teams coach during the first meeting asked him, how uh, how many players are on the on the field at one time for your team? He guessed thirteen. Oh, okay. I mean, he had, all right. He, named, he, he was close. He played wide receiver in high school. They moved to tight end at San Diego State. He literally had to Google tight end to see what that meant because in his high school offense they didn't have a tight end, so hmm. he literally had zero idea what tight end meant. It's just a very raw player, but for a player that's this raw, you have to be optimist, feel optimistic about where he is right now in his development, and then just how much higher he can go. Okay, so for today, what I wanted to do is we do this every year. We are about a month away from the draft, so it's time to start fixing every team in the NFL. All so if you're, if you're a fan of a team that's in something, a division in the East, congrats. We'll fix your team today. Uh, the NFC East and the AFC East. And we'll try to do two divisions per week and get through all of them before the draft gets here. And then who knows, maybe some bonus content at some point. But where would you like to start, Dane? The American Football Conference or the National Football Conference? Um, yeah, let's start with we'll start with the AFC. Uh, we we'll start with the earlier pick first, I guess. I suppose so. So we're looking at let me see here the AFC East. We've Jets. got Bills, Jets, Patriots, and Dolphins. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the team needs according to me. Actually, not according to me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to steal from our buddies Evan Silva and Josh Norris. Do good work over there at Roto World. And give you the team needs. And then you, with uh, me as your assistant GM, is going to figure out how to use their draft picks. Okay. So the biggest needs, offensive line. Uh, Let me see here. Right tackle, right guard. Yeah, you can go any direction you like (laughs) if you want an offensive lineman. Yep, so they need offensive line help. Edge rusher and cornerback are the biggest needs for the Jets. And they're going to pick number three overall. Yep. So they're going to have a chance to get an edge rusher. And they don't have a second-round pick. So they don't have a second-round pick. Okay. Uh, They used that to get it for Sam Darnold last year. So uh, for the Jets, you know they want out of that pick. They want a chance to recoup some of that draft capital uh, maybe for a team looking to get a quarterback, is that Dwayne Haskins? Um, you know, if if Kyler Murray does go one, which we expect, and then at number two, uh, say Nick Bosa, there's going to be some pretty talented players on the board. Quinn and Williams, Josh Allen uh, being the top two. Uh, does a team like one of those two players enough that they trade up for him? And did the Jets feel comfortable enough trading away from those two players to get into that, re, get back into that second round uh, that they give up on that that spot. So that's Michael. So how Kagan far can we go? Have, how far can we go down to get back into the second round so that we can pick them two players instead of one? We're going to get them out of three. We're going to move them to eight to ten range. Sure. Um, you know, in one of my mock drafts, I you know, I it, it's just tough to figure out. Make the Giants come get a quarterback and go to six. Yeah, I just don't think that they're going to do it. But right. maybe. Um, Plus, I don't know if the Jets and Giants are they allowed to trade. Yeah, I think it's legal. Um, it's allowed. All right, we talked about that last year, and last year's uh, uh, top five, top six. You know, I, I it's funny, uh, just off topic a little bit, but you know, it seemed like a month ago the wild card of the draft is Kyler Murray. Now the wild card of the draft is Dwayne Haskins. Like we feel good about uh, Kyler Murray going one, and I don't know where Haskins is going to go. Uh, is he going to go six to the Giants? Are we going to see a trade up in the top five? How about Miami? I would like Miami. That's okay. where I want him to go. I mean, they don't have a plan at quarterback. No, but all it seems like all indications are they're going to wait until next year to get their quarterback. You know, they're going to bulk up the roster as much as they can right now. It is tank time for them. Yeah, so you know, Haskins is really a wild card. Um, well, maybe we can't get a trade down, and we just have to pick somebody at three. We'll just stay at three, and then we'll maybe we'll do uh, if they were to get into the second round, who'd they be looking at? Uh, so with the third pick, again, Murray won. Let's just say Bosa does go two. Does it come down? Is it as simple as is it Quinn and Williams or Josh Allen at number three for the Jets? Uh, I would think so. Yeah, I think that's all the names that I need right now. Yeah, and then it becomes interesting which direction do they go? Uh, Greg Williams coming in, new defensive coordinator for the Jets. Uh, you know, I we still don't know. I think officially if they're going to be a three four or four three. They talk about both. Greg Williams has said that he has uh, in his playbook, you know, variations of both. So I don't think we need to get too hung up on the scheme part of it. I think they just need to go with the best player. So we're going to take Quinn and Williams. I agree. <sighs> yeah, I mean, that's where I would lean. But at the same time, they have Leonard Williams. You know, like they have some 
some depth in, in the in the line. They really need a pass rusher. So maybe the biggest impact for the for the Jets would be to go Josh Allen. You gonna leave the best player on the board? That's what you're gonna do in the top three? Not that's not what I would do, but I think the Jets that I think they might go pass rusher over the interior player because uh, I, I think they might want the, the outside guide rather than another Leonard Williams. Okay, now let's pretend that they trade down. Okay. Since we can't find the realistic place of somebody coming up, we're just going to move right. them down to, say, in the 8-10 to 10 range. And now they have a second-round pick in the early to mid-second round. Right. And now we need either the edge rusher or the offensive line help. But then, yeah, this is where we go offensive line. If they are in, say they're picking 10, hypothetically, this is where they might have their choice of the first offensive lineman off the board, or if not the first, then the second, maybe the third. So they're going to get a chance that they're going to get one of these really good offensive tackles, uh, whether that's Jonah Williams, Jawan Taylor, Andre Dillard. Um, I, they're not going to be able to go wrong. They're going to get a player that's going to upgrade their offensive line immediately. Do you feel like Jonah Williams is the safest pick out of those? I really like me, Dillard. Yeah. I don't know what he's going to be necessarily as a run blocker. Yeah, that's Pass fair. blocking is more important, mm-hmm. and he's a ballerina. Yeah, he's a terrific athlete. Super long arms, and he's just seems different. Like his timing yeah. is great. Yeah. Uh, so pick your offensive tackle: Williams or Dillard or Cody Ford. Um, I, or Taylor. <laughs> For the Jets, uh, let's go Jonah Williams. I mean, he's a player that plug and play. Uh, I think has some tackle guard versatility. Uh, he's a technician, uh, a guy that uh, I think you feel really good about. You know who he's going to be uh, long term for you. Okay, now we get to the second round for the Jets, and we need an edge rusher. Well, we don't need an edge rusher. We need to pick the best player available out of edge rusher. Oh yeah, corner or offensive line. So that might be a good spot for a corner there. Yeah, uh, I think that would be a good spot. Um, what about the guy we just talked about, yeah, Sean the, Sean Bunting? Give him our guy. Yeah, I think that'd be. The, but I want him on my team, whichever <laughs> team that is. Of course, I'm not. I'm not biased on this. Just, we can. You can get, save him for later. Okay. We're, no, we're, let's no, let's give him away because I think that's a great spot for him. I think somewhere it is too. around thirty eight to forty five. Yeah, exactly. Top forty five. That that sounds about right for him. A guy that not afraid to press. I mean, he he's this is a guy that he gray shirted when he first got to Central Michigan. What's like, that even mean? They didn't have a scholarship for him. Oh. So, like, they basically said, we want you, but we don't have room in this recruiting class. So, basically, we have dibs on you. You just kind of wait and kind of be a walk-on until we can put you on scholarship. So, it's really, a, you know, he didn't have many options. If he didn't sign, if he didn't do a great shirt with Central Michigan, I think his next best option was, like, Saginaw Valley State or, you know, something like that. I oh, tore it up. He did a great time. Yeah, probably. Uh, but, you know, he's a he's a guy that's... Uh, Really, really been impressive. Uh, the tape was really good, and I, I think he's on the way up. He's ascending. So I think that's a good pick for the Jets. What about the third round? Well, in the third round, they'll have the 93rd overall pick, and we, uh, we've we got our offensive line help. We've got our corner help. Ideally, and we're probably just going to pick the best player, but ideally. Well, I have two picks in the third round. Oh, look at this. 68. Oh, yeah, 68 and 93. Okay. By the way, on Roto World, Josh Norris picked him bunting in the fourth round. Cheater! <laughs> he ain't going to make it there. Maybe he does. Maybe we're, maybe I, we're I, wild. I don't think so. Uh, third round, number 68 overall. So at 68 and 93, we're looking for realistic names to maybe help on the offensive line again. 68. Maybe pass rushing. Maybe um, a little bit of corner. If he gets there, uh, well, I guess let me just ask you where you think he's going to go. My new obsession recently is Chase Winovich. Yeah. The Michigan defensive end. I, I like Chase. Um, I, I think that he would fit better in a three four. Um, oh no! I don't. He's not. Think he's too small. Yeah, I mean, he, he's six three, two fifty five. I mean, he's, he's okay. I mean, yeah. I, there are some times where he gets controlled in the run game a little bit. Um, I love the effort. I mean, he makes more backside plays than I think anybody maybe I've ever scouted. Uh, he's the effort is just maniacal. Um, I, he has some angled bend to him as a pass rusher. Um, he, I just he doesn't have the length or the explosive traits necessarily that you want in a you know top tier pass rusher. But we're in the third we're round. We're in the third round, so eh? yeah, exactly. And that's where I think he's he's going to go somewhere in the top seventy five picks. Oh, and I want him to go with fifty eighth pick. Uh, Cowboys aren't going to take him. Um, uh, he's not their style. Did it have long enough arms? No, yeah, they're and they're they're more interested in the, the Zach Allen's from Boston College, which is so weird because I was told for years all they care about is getting upfield and athleticism, and now all they want is fat, slow guys with long. They're arms. looking to replace Tyron Crawford. Is what they're trying to do, trying to find the long term replacement for him. So 
So yeah, that's what we need to do. Find a rotational defensive yep. line. Sounds great. Uh, but yeah, let's go Chase Winovich there. Why not? Uh, I, I think he's a uh, you know like I think he's being over overvalued as you know people talking about him as a first round player, but. I, I, you know, anywhere in the, outside I got him the in top, the middle of the second, and you won't talk me out of it. That, that's fine. I mean, anywhere like outside of the top forty, I'd be fine with Chase Winovich. Uh, you know, and early parts of the third round, yeah, I think that makes sense for them. Okay, and then we have one more pick. Uh, we hit the top three needs, so let's just double up somewhere. We need another corner, another edge player, another well, offensive let's get, lineman. Let's get another. Let's get a weapon for Sam Darnold. Ooh. Uh, you know, he gave him Le'Veon Bell and, and free agency. We have no another... idea what order these receivers are going to go. At no, least I know. it's it's going to be tough. And so we're talking about what the ninety third pick you said. Yeah. So at that point, um, what about Emmanuel Hall? Uh, a little speed from Missouri, yeah, a guy that can stretch the field, and I, you know, I, I think he brings in a little bit, a little bit of juice to your offense. I think that's good. I think they'll take Emmanuel Hall. Congrats, Jets fans! Okay. Your team's been fixed in the first two days of the draft. Okay, we got to go much faster. The Jets got way too much time. They did. Uh, our next team, who's next in the order to pick there? Miami. Okay, so the Miami Dolphins. Let me go get your needs here. Please hold. Clicky, clicky. Dolphins, dolphins. According to me, aka according to Roto World. I'm sorry, it's Buffalo, but we'll go Miami first. Whatever. There are three needs. Offensive line. Man, that's common in the NFL, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Secondary and defensive line. (laughs) Now, they need a quarterback, but I guess they're going with the same idea that they're tanking. Yeah. That they're going after either Tua or maybe a two-year tank for Herbert or for... uh, for uh, Lawrence. Wouldn't be the craziest thing I ever heard. Uh, so offensive line, secondary, defensive line. Their first pick is number 13 overall, which is probably going to be another sweet spot for offensive line, I would think, out of those. Well, defensive uh, or offensive line. Yeah, though. no, I think you hit it. Yeah, this is going to be a trench player, I, I think. I think that's where we're heavily leaning towards. Um, I, I think, yeah, you couldn't go wrong. Go, you add an Andre Dillard. Oh, I already got the name. Protect your edge. I know who we're picking. Oh, you did? We're going to take Ed Oliver. Okay. Can I get him to 13? Yeah, possibly. I mean, I think he's... Nothing with Ed Oliver would surprise me because he's not going to be a scheme fit for everybody. He can go in the top 10 easily, but if he's still there at 13, 14, no, nah, it wouldn't be a surprise. So uh, he works out Thursday, by the way, which would be interesting. See what he works out at. First of all, to see what his weight is. He was 287 at the Combine. Is he still 287 now? Is that what he's going to try and work out at? So we'll have to see about that. But yeah, Ed Oliver at 13, I mean, that'd be, a, that'd be a heck of a steal for Miami. Okay, so we want to go with that or we want to Let's give him an offensive sure. tackle somewhere? Okay, so their next pick is in the second round, number 48, 48 overall. And again, you're probably going to be in a sweet spot for the secondary. Mm-hmm. Or if you wanted to go with some offensive line, you could do that. Uh, let's see. What about it? We go offensive tackle. Uh, Somebody to pair with Laramie Tunsil. Yeah, Caleb McGarry, right tackle from Washington. All right, let me write down that I need to watch Caleb McGarry. 6'7", 317 pounds, pretty good athlete. Um, he was a right tackle only at Washington. Even when Trey Adams went down, he stayed at right tackle. Um, moves well. Uh, I, 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 McGarry is the type of player who's a little bit of an acquired taste. Uh, tape was okay, not great, but okay. And then you see him at the Senior Bowl, you see him at the Combine, you start to see, okay, this guy, uh, you know, he, he doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He's uh, got some things he needs to work on, plays a little too narrow, a little too upright. But uh, you have some traits that you can work with. Uh, I think that's why we're talking about him as a second-round pick. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if McGarry, uh, even if he's not there at that point, but I think that's realistic. Could go somewhere top 50, so 48 overall to Miami makes sense. Third round, we've now hit a defensive line and an offensive line. They also need secondary. So if we are looking for a third round secondary player, maybe corner a safety, bunch of them. what are we thinking? Uh, let me take a peek here. I don't, if I had to pretend I'd know their roster off the top of my head, I'd be lying to you. Well, uh, let's see. They got Minka and Xavier Howard recently. Right. Uh, outside of that, you could pretty much try to upgrade wherever you want. So you could use a corner or a safety. Okay, and third round, uh, maybe this is where we, your Penn State corner goes. Another big size guy to, to pair with Xavier Howard. Oh, yes, yes. Six, yeah. I mean, order while we're I eight. like it, because otherwise I was looking at smaller guys around there, like uh, 
Well, you tell me if I'm off on these grades, but third round I have guys like Julian Love at Notre Dame, David Long at Michigan, yeah, guys like that. I like Love a little bit more, uh, but yeah, I mean, I smaller guys uh, sometimes. It's a stopwatch and measurable position, so. So give him the full-size guy. Yeah, I think so. All right, there he goes. You have to say his name again because I don't know it. Or Order Warway. I don't, I'm, Goodbye, I'm bad at, that's one of the names I'm bad at in this year's draft. Well, why don't you figure it out? That's Congratulations tough. to the Miami Dolphins. We fixed your team. Now. At Oliver McGarry in Penn State Corner. Not bad. It's not a bad run. The Buffalo Bills team needs. Man, these are repetitive. <laughs> offensive line, defensive line, tight end. Their first pick is number nine overall, which means I get to ask the question. Are we insane if we take a tight end at number nine overall? No. TJ Hawkinson, let's go! I, I get it. Hawk Daddy. There's not a lot of, you know, there's not a big sample size of top ten tight ends that went on to have, you know, big-time NFL success, but in no way should that stop the Buffalo Bills from, if they believe in TJ Hawkinson, which it's not hard to believe in Hawkinson with what he can do, um, I would be fine with that. I mean, your goal with this pick should be help out your quarterback. So if you're either drafting an offensive tackle or you're drafting uh, some kind of skill player. If you, I mean, we know they had a little bit of conversations about Antonio Brown. Uh, they've added in the wide receiver position, free agency. So, hey, I'm on board. If you, uh, this pick is either offensive line. If I say you need a left guard, a tight end, uh, or a defensive lineman, and TJ might be Hawkinson might be I'd the be, pick. I, they're, I'd take him there over anybody to play guard, I think. Yeah, that, I mean, that's fair. Especially at number nine overall. If, I mean, if you tell me that, uh, it'd be hard to talk me out of TJ Hawkins. I mean, you could pretty much talk me into TJ Hawkins at any point in the draft. Number one? Fine. I mean, if that's, <laughs> Stop it. If, that's what, if, if you're, you're going to buy into Josh Rosen as your guy, okay, maybe not one, but <laughs> anywhere outside the top three picks, you, okay. could, you could talk me into TJ We're going Hawkinson. TJ Hawkinson. Okay. Their second pick is number 40. Uh, overall in the draft in the second round there. I think we could factor in wide receiver too. Yeah. I mean, they, got John, what is it? It's John Brown, Cole Beasley, and what? Yeah, I mean, they, Buffalo. they added quite a bit, but they, they could use some more size. Uh, so we could go into the trenches. We could go either side of the trenches at number 40 overall. Yeah. Do we want to go... I mean, the, the guards at this point... Lindstrom? Lindstrom and Reisner are my two... Second round. Okay, had Reisner at tackle. Is he short armed? Do I need to move him around? I don't, on tape, he looks like a guard to me. Okay, I don't know. I mean, I know he played right tackle for three years at Kansas State. He did okay at the Senior Bowl at right tackle. I don't know. I just see a guard. I that's just me. But I think there's a lot of a split opinion on that. Um, Pick him one. You're the GM. Let's go, Reisner. Gives them a little bit of tackle versatility if they want to try that too. Okay, so you got your offensive lineman. You got TJ Hawkinson. So you already won the draft because you got TJ Hawkinson. There you go. And we move into the third round for them, which is third round number 74 overall. We already got an offensive lineman. We already got a tight end. Uh, You want to give them some help on the defensive line in the third round? Yeah. Let's go. What pick did they have in the third they are, I already said it, Dane. You weren't listening. To I wasn't listening. 74. 74. Um, at that point, <sighs> Christian Miller, Max Crosby. You look at Max Crosby, Eastern Michigan. I haven't watched Max Crosby. Thanks for the name, though. I'm going to type him on my little thing here. Hold on. He's interesting. 6'5", 255, angular athlete. Is he Oregon? Uh, Eastern Michigan. Eastern Michigan. Colors, you said colors are kind of similar. I wasn't listening. Yeah. Um, he tested fairly well. Four six six in the forty, six eight nine three cone, one six two in the in a ten yard split, which is outstanding for a uh for an edge rusher. So Max Crosby. Let it rip. I like it. Let's go. Let with it, it rip. Patriots. The okay. evil, evil, hated, stupid Patriots. So the question at thirty two, does a tight end get to them? Right. We're trying to see if Noah Fant can make 32. Which I'd be surprised if he did. Are we taking... They'll use tight ends in line. Are we taking Irv Smith, number 32 overall? That, yeah, that's a good question. Is Irv Smith worthy of the 32 pick? Or Maybe not. Or do they go a different direction? I think he's worthy of it somewhere in the top 40. But yeah, I mean, I think there, there's a chance a better player could be there. 
The player that I keep they going back to. They can take any to, pass catcher, really. Yeah. They're not good at wide receiver. Let me throw a name at you. But Jeffrey Simmons here. Oh, I love it. Yeah, they're the team that would do that. Even this, if he ends up having a red shirt the entire year. If oh, yeah. The top 15 They talent. won the Super Bowl with the fewest amount of snaps from their rookie class. Yeah, they don't team. care because they just trade comp picks for veterans. Every right. Year. I mean, they, yeah. They're in a situation where they don't need, uh, you know, they, they feel good about the team they have. So, you know, they, plus they get back Isaiah Wynn. You know, that's basically getting back a first round pick. So I love it. They can make the move. Let's go Isaiah Simmons, Okay, so or, they're uh, taking a defensive tackle Jeffrey there Simmons. that may not play this year. And that, holy crap. What's that? They have a lot of picks, man. They do have a lot of picks. We're trying to get through the podcast, the, Bill. Uh, what, two in the second round? Number 56 overall. Okay. Okay. The Patriots could go defensive line, pass catcher, left tackle, uh, all sorts of things. Patriots could go all over the place. Let's start. Why don't we pick a wide receiver? We've been, we haven't given anybody a wide receiver yet. Okay. And now we've got a team that needs one at number 56 overall. And in that range, there are 150 names you could choose from. Debo Samuel. Why are you keep giving away my guys? I think he'd be the perfect Patriot. He would be because he's tough and he's a tough, good smart, competitive. Runner. He's versatile. He could be used in different ways. All right, that makes sense. That's stupid. <laughs> well, I don't want them to get all my guys. <laughs> Burn the podcast. We start over. <laughs> That's it. I'm gonna hit space bar, which stops this. Uh, let's see. Now they have another pick. Eight picks later, at number 64 in the second round. Stupid Patriots. I hate you guys. I wonder why they're so good over here. Oh, so they lost Trey Flowers. They lost Malcolm Brown. They lost Danny Shelton. So any sort of defensive lineman mm-hmm. would work here. Uh, did my guy at the Combine test badly enough, LJ Collier from TCU, that I can't take him here? Do I need to keep waiting? I, I still think Collier goes fairly early. Like um, before this pick. Yeah, I do. Okay. Even though his testing is abysmal. Uh, okay, what about those inside-outside players like Zach Allen? That's that's the name I was going to throw out there, yeah. Boston College? Zach Allen, a guy that can give you inside-outside versatility, play set the edge, but also reduce inside as a uh, and rush packages. So I think that, that would make sense. Patriots And that's have- if he doesn't go 58 to the Cowboys. Patriots have three picks in the third round. Number 73, number 97, number 101. Can I give him one at 73? I got an idea. Okay. I got an idea. What do you got? Can I just throw a dart at the board and pick Will Greer and see if we Mm. can find the next quarterback who can sit around for a couple years? Okay. Sure. Third round too early for that? No, I mean, if you want Will Greer, third round is probably where you need to take him. Um, I'd be fine with that. Let's do it. 73rd pick. All right, you get 97 and 101. We got two more. All right, uh, let's go with the tight end with one of these picks. Um, uh, in- oh, take San Diego State. Take San Diego State. Yeah, that'd be a good option. You can do this, Dane. If he's there, 96. Nada. There's your Patriot. How's he going to go with Josh Oliver? San Jose State. Okay, that works for me, too. Uh, he's a guy that can... You know, play in line. He can hurt you over the middle of the field. I think he would make sense uh, in a Patriots uniform. One more third round pick. Um, they like to double up at positions. So we already gave him a defensive lineman. Let's give him another one, Charles Amenahu. That seems like a very Patriots pick to me. Okay, all right. Ut. Uh, yeah. Are you playing him at end? Are you moving him around? He's playing a little bit of everything. That that's it. Play a little bit of everything. Amenahu. All right. Goodbye, AFC East. Hello, NFC East. As we're Fixing every team in the world. And in the NFC East, I know the Cowboys aren't going to be the first ones picking because I don't have a first round pick. No, uh, that'd be uh, Washington or Washington. Giants. Yeah, the Six New York overall. Giants. Oh, this is fun. Do we want a quarterback? Do we want a defensive yeah, lineman? Uh, the, Do we want a corner? Do we want a receiver? Do we want an offensive lineman? The Their gi- team's not good. <laughs> no. And there's they so many different help. directions they can go here. They need a lot of help. Uh, I would lean towards defensive line here. Okay, and we'll assume that at the beginning of the draft, we lose Quinn and Williams, we lose yeah. Nick Bosa. Are we losing Josh Allen? Yeah, he's gone. We lose Josh Allen. So this pick, let's just say it's Rashawn Gary, Montez Sweat. Really, those two guys, I think, would be the two you're looking at there. Yeah, well, yeah, it's not Rashawn Gary. You're going to have to get more than three and a half sacks in a college football season to get in the top ten with me, buddy. That's not how things work. I don't care how things work. I'm telling you how things should work. 
we're in the well, top. Well, if things 10, how it should work, then if, we should be taking Haskins. If here. we're in the top ten and you're picking a defensive lineman, he needs traits and production. Yeah, Joey Bosa had five sacks his last year at Ohio State. Joey Bosa's tape said he was going to sack everyone. Uh, Gary's uh, doesn't say that. Gary's traits. That's that's his traits. That's what NFL teams draft. They don't draft production. They draft traits. Winovich is going to be a better player than him. That's not too crazy. Okay, so we're going to give them... I'm giving them Montez Sweat. That's fine. Protest. No, that's... I won't let them have Gary. That's all right. Well, I mean, I, being uh, who you are, I figured you'd want to give Giants the worst player. Oh, but. yeah. Rashawn Gary. Yes. <laughs> yeah, great point. Rashawn Gary to the Giants, and that is in the books. Okay. Uh, now, after that pick... Whoops. Where did my full order go? 37 overall. Okay, at 37... The Giants who word my needs. Oh, I'm sorry. 17. The Odell Beckham trade. For giant needs, I went with the big blue Okay. Can't go wrong with a local blog. We gave them what did we already give them? A D lineman? Yep. All right. So now we're down to choosing between their very few needs. QB, corner, receiver, O line, still D line. Uh, and we are early second round. No, seventeen overall. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. 17 over. So, Holy cow. now, do they go... Would they go with Daniel Jones here? From Duke? I would like to make them go Daniel Jones, because I think he's going to fail. Rashawn Gary and Daniel Jones the yeah, first Yeah, I think this round. is great. I think we're doing great. Yeah, I think we're doing I, I great. I think it's realistic, though. Yeah, an overhyped it is. guy and an overhyped guy. This is perfect. I love it. Yes. <laughs> Daniel Jones, done. Okay. What's their next pick, Dane? 37. 37. How can we screw this one up? <laughs> what other needs? Who's somebody that you think will be hurt throughout their whole career? Let's get him. What other needs we have? Uh, let's see. What did we just pick? I forgot. Defense we got a quarterback and we got a D line. So let's look at corners, receivers, and O line. Okay. Early second round, we could take almost any receiver. How many receivers do we assume are gone? Metcalf. Gone? Metcalf Brown's such a wild card with the injury. Um, I think AJ Brown's probably gone at that point. Um. Kelvin Harmon, NC State. We want to go uh, Nikhil Harry from and Arizona State. You're not a State. Butler fan, right? I can't get you a guy that looks like Plaxico. <laughs> I mean, I, I, that's you, we could go there. Uh, sure, we can go Akeem, uh, Akeem Butler there. I, I'd be very now surprised. You think that's a bad value pick? I Butler's like sixty on my board, so yeah. I've got him somewhere in the second to third round range. Okay, yeah. So you're with me. Mm, I have him in the third. But, okay, okay, so yeah, you're you're not. Uh, I've been told a lot of things about my take on Hakeem Butler, but oh. you're actually lower than me. So, and I don't know. I Twitter likes Hakeem Butler a lot more than NFL teams do. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, give me a, give me a receiver that NFL teams like. The uh, third, I mean, fourth, fifth receiver in the draft. Nikhil Harry. I mean, he, he's got his fans. I mean, because okay. I think he's. He's really physical at the catch point. He's got he can play in the slot as a big slot. I mean, he can uh you know, I think he's going to have a tougher time versus NFL corners compared to what he faced in the Pac-12, but uh, you know, I think that top 40 is kind of around the range where he's going to go. Okay, so we take him there. Do we have more picks? Of course, I'm sure we do. Uh they will the third round, they don't have their third round pick cuz they use it in a supplemental draft. Okay, so we're done with the Giants. Get out of here. Oh no, they have a comp pick. Uh they do. They got a comp pick. At least I show number 95 overall. That's the Jets, right? Or the Giants. I mean, ESPN.com could be wrong. I have the full Maybe 2019 it's, NFL draft okay. order. Says the Giants are at 95. But I don't doubt your order. If you say they don't have 95, they don't have 95. No, I mean, that, that, that might be right. I don't have the internet here, so. What? No. Hold on. Let me see if I can. Let's do this. Full NFL draft order. I'll pick a different link, and I'll see who's at number 95. Tankathon. Tankathon wouldn't lie to us. Uh, Giants are at 96, according to Tankathon. They have a, a comp pick at number 96, and your face is saying, no, they don't. I, I love it. I don't know. <laughs> I love it. If they have a late third round pick <laughs> in the compensatory part for the Giants, uh, give them some help on the offensive line, I guess. Who's a late third round offensive lineman? Uh, Yanni Kajus, West Virginia. Boom, look at that. We did it. There you go. Now get out of here, Giants. You may get that guy and you may not, depending on if you have that pick. <laughs> uh, okay, so the Giants are done. We are on to Washington? Yep, Is Washington. That right? The Washington Redskins. 
Hogshaven.com mm. brings us the needs. Can't go wrong with a local blog. Quarterback, edge, wide receiver, safety, guard, tight end corner linebacker. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, everything. They need everything in uh, Washington. At 15, I think we, the conversation starts on do we, is Drew Locke the pick or they go in a different direction? I like giving him a quarterback. <laughs> Does Haskins make it all the way to 15? It's possible. I, I'm surprised. There's, I have talked to several uh, scouts of the NFL teams who say their team has Hask or Locke above Haskins on their board. Which okay, I'm surprised to hear that. Um, I, I know Haskins has there, there's issues with Haskins. He is not a perfect, clean prospect, but neither is Locke. So a little surprised to hear that. But um, I I don't know. I'd still be surprised if Haskins is 15, but it's possible. It's certainly possible. Okay, so let's give them Drew Locke. Let's do that. Okay, I'm looking at a third website. If I'm Washington, I'm. And Haskins slips a little bit. I'm trading up to 10 and getting Haskins. Giants, according to chat sports, do not have the comp pick at the end of the third round. I, I, yeah, my order is showing. And according to Dane. Yeah. So I'm going to believe that they're right since they agree with you, which means that Washington, after we give them Drew Locke, is going to pick in the second round at number 46 overall. Mm-hmm. What positions have we not even touched? I don't... <laughs> Let me make sure. What do they need? Let me take a look at you, Washington, again. They need to replace Preston Smith. Okay. On the outside. And and is this a spot for Collier? Is that about where you're saying he would go? Yeah, I, I think that would make sense. Um, are we standing up or are we hand on ground? Well, I mean, they stand up. As if it matters. Yeah, I, I, it really doesn't. Um, Could uh, Polite free fall to 46? Mm, I like that. That's, that's a, a good one. That's a fun spot. It's an organization that's not afraid to take some chances. They just with uh, you know Ruben Foster and some other guys they have. So yeah, I like that. Let's go with Jachai Polite there. Okay, so we got J- Jachai good, Polite. Good value if he uh, keeps his nose clean and matures. And then we go to number seventy six, and then I'll leave it up to you if number ninety six, if you think they have a comp pick there or not. They do have ninety six. <laughs> okay, great. Yes. <laughs> okay, so this place has it right. Uh, number 76 for Washington, who we have given a quarterback and we have given an edge player. We get into the third round. Uh, let's see. QB and edge. We knocked those out. Offensive line help. You could go receiver. You could go safety. You could go guard. You want to go guard? Yeah. In the third round. Uh, What third round guards do you have? Lidstrom will be gone. Reisner will be gone. Yeah, you got the wrong guy for third round guards at this point in the process. Thanks for asking. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Oklahoma got one. Uh, yeah, I mean Drew Samia. Uh, Too early? No, I mean third round certainly possible. Uh, maybe we'll go guard with their second third round pick. So with their second third round pick, we'll go Drew Samia from Oklahoma. Okay. And then with our first third round pick, we want to go safety or wide receiver. Um. Can't go wrong. Who would you go with at safety there? I can give you my – are all of my guys going to be gone in the first two rounds? If Darnell Abram Savage Rapp, is there. Adderley, Gardner-Johnson, Savage, those are my first two-round guys. If Savage is there, that would be a no-brainer, I think. He'd per- pair him with Landon Collins. That would be a pretty good duo right there. Let's do it. I don't know if he makes it that far because he's, he's too good of a player, yeah. but he – because of his size, I mean, he's five ten and a half, under 200 pounds. So he could slip to the early portion of the third round and be there. So let's go with it. Could go at 58. Never know. He, no, he could. He's he's a good player. I love him. I've been singing his praises since the summer. Washington, you're done. Next, Philadelphia Eagles. Let's see here. They're tough to figure out at 25. Uh, well, according to the Eagles wire, at USA Today can't go wrong. Mm. With a local blog, mm-hmm. we could use a left tackle mm-hmm. to get ready for Jason Peters to be gone. Running back, uh, other offensive line spots, wide receiver, corner safety. So we got a lot of options. When we get to number twenty-five overall. 
If Josh Jacobs is there, is that too early? Is that way too early for Miles Sanders? I love Miles Sanders' tape. Is he a fumbler? Is that his thing? Yeah, big big time fumbler. God, I love his tape. He, yeah, he's Penn State's running back's badass. I, he's good. No, he's badass. I, he's like a not as explosive version of Saquon Barkley. Miles, if you hear which this, is a compliment. Just remember that Dane doesn't like you. That's a compliment. I'm a big fan. That Dane is a compliment. Like you uh, he thinks 25 is way too early for Miles Sanders. It's yeah. way too early for any running back. It is. It is exactly. <laughs> but, uh, you can give him Josh Jacobs if you want to. No, because I don't think they're going to go that. I mean, I don't think the Eagles and Howie Roseman, I don't think that's how they think. Um, as how about much, Cody Ford? I just, I, there's no way he makes it that far, I don't okay. think. Um, I think Nasir Adderley makes sense. Anytime you have a chance to upgrade your secondary, that is, okay. makes sense. Um, Did DeAndre Baker make it to 25? Yeah, I don't know. Nope. Um, DeAndre Baker, I don't know. Oh, you don't like him? Yeah. Woo. He's okay. <laughs> He's good. Oh, Dean. There's some issues there, though. Man, we would fight. Good. Byron Murphy will be gone? Byron Murphy, is, he's tough to figure out because of the size. I mean, if Oh, you're, you hate him, too? No, no, I okay, like him. Right. I like Byron Murphy. The the NFL, Dane's top corner is just some 6'4 guy. It, 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 if the NFL is they don't like him. Uh-huh. Well, no, I shouldn't say they don't like him. They have their... If you run a 4'5'5 five, five and you're under 5'11", that's not good. There's not a lot of corners that have those two things and go in the top 25 picks. Who do you want? You want to give him to Sear Adderley? You just want to throw some guy from Delaware at him? Some is guy that, from Delaware. Is that what you want to do? You just want to throw some guy He's from Delaware? He's a Philly native yeah. with Hall of Fame bloodlines. Okay. And he would immediately upgrade the Eagles secondary. Adderley, go. Do you're, it. You're in there. Uh, okay, the next pick for the Eagles. They've, they've got two in a second. 53 and 57. Okay, so at 53 and 57, and we are looking for... Who'd you just pick him? Some bum safety? Yes, precisely. Yeah, 53 and 57, so we don't need a safety, but we could still go corner, receiver, offensive line, or running back. Now let's give him a running back. Yeah, I, I think, uh, what Damian Harris from Alabama? The other Alabama running back. Yeah, slap him in there. He does. He's, he's like a 75% version of Zeke. Does everything really well. Uh, nothing elite, but he's just he's solid. I think he'd fit really well with uh, what the Eagles do. 75%. I don't want 75% of any player. Well, I guess I do if his salary is 10% of his salary. 57 overall. Okay, 57. We're going... They got Deshaun Jackson, so they don't need that type of receiver, but would they go more size? I mean, I don't I don't know. I'd still be surprised if we went, went wide receiver that early. Okay. Maybe, I, I think maybe a, a trench player. Defensive line or offensive line here. Uh, they they could go either way. Uh, they need to get some youth on the edges, get some help on the in- interior. Um, Christian Miller. See, I don't. I Miller is more of a stand-up guy to me. Okay. Collier. Nelson. What about on the interior? What about what about um, uh, what Draymond Jones from Ohio State? Do you think that you're barking up the right tree? Because where are we in the draft? 57. Okay, I heard first round a long time ago, and I was like, what? Uh, yeah, I think that's a good spot for him. His flashes are first round. It's just the body of work. Said, Hut, stand round. up straight. <laughs> yeah. Just a bad plan. He's former basketball players still figuring Get things tall. out. Get tall. Grab that rebound. Uh, and then the third round, see, they don't have... Let me see, 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 let me see. They have nothing. I don't see the yeah. word Philadelphia in the third round. They do not have their third round pick. Okay, so we move All right, on. one more team left. Congrats, you've been fixed. And the last team this is, is the first round slappy pick. team called the Dallas Cowboys. So we're going to pick at number 58. All we're right. going to pick at number 90. Where are they going to 58? Who? Tight end off the board. I know they would They're say, not going tight end. Okay, so they're it's not going not tight end. What is on the board? We're looking at safeties and edge players. Yeah, that would make that those safeties and defensive linemen. I, I would say defensive linemen, yeah. Okay, so safeties and D linemen. Edge or interior. We're at fifty eight, which is a kind of a weird spot. Mm-hmm. Because our top guys let me ask you this. Where's Jerry Tillery going? Tape is first round. Yeah, he's a first round talent. 
uh, just where teams are comfortable with him because, you know, just when he gets to that first training camp and he gets the snot beat out of him, is he going to be like, shoot, I could be, you know, making money doing something else? That's that's the, so that's, that's the a concern. Knock, is that he's smart? Like it's not that books. he's. It's not that he. No, see, like I don't know. People say that, and it makes it sound like the NFL doesn't like smart people. That's what. But I like. I don't know. Like I don't know his it, off field other than I just hear general words. It, he's smart. It's just, does he love football enough? Where because he knows he could be making money doing other things. Does he love football enough where he's going to be okay getting his butt kicked every day and still play to his top ability and you know come back for more the next day even hungrier. You know, not every guy's wired like that, and that's a big question with Tillery. Is does he have that that hunger in him to be the best NFL player he can be? Can he make fifty eight? I'd be surprised if he made it that far because, okay. like you said, he's a first round talent. Uh, what about Jalen Ferguson, Mister Three Cone? I didn't love his tape. I didn't, but the Cowboys have shown interest. I know. I didn't. I didn't love his tape. And with the Demarcus Lawrence, Demarcus Lawrence is he's gonna play, we think, right? But we think Randy Gregory is up in the air. You just don't know. Taco Charlton, I, I Jalen don't. Ferguson ran the worst three cone and the worst short shuttle in the history of the drills. His, he's the worst bend, worst change of direction pass did rusher. You, did you watch the three of cone all time? I did. It's pretty bad, but it was like his seventh time. He was tired, which is and probably tired of falling down on his previous attempts. But L- LJ Collier's three cone wasn't much better. I know it was close. I know it was pretty comparable. I like Collier's tape better. I agree. Uh, There's actually some, but like Ferguson's not a not a dip bend flexible guy. He's a speed to power guy. That's how he wins as a pass rusher. So while the three cone was just as bad as you could possibly get, it wasn't a huge shocker because that's just not how he wins on the football field. And we're talking 58 here. I know what we're talking about. I'm either going to... You're agonizing over this. I am because I like Collier's tape better, but his production is almost nothing. The Cowboys... Ferguson's like, production is incredible. They like Collier too, but I just don't think he makes it to 58, where Jalen Ferguson could. Oh, you don't think he makes it? Holy cow. Collier, no. Okay, so I can still be comfortable liking my guy. I thought the combine might have killed my guy Collier. I think teams will, I think they'll look past it. Okay. Jalen Ferguson, huh? 58. Jaylen. If we're going to go defensive line, I think that's what we're looking at right here. Jalen Ferguson. Can't I take bunting? Can I undo somebody else picking <laughs> nope. him and get bunting? This team's not going to take him. Can I go get a safety? Are, What's, okay. It, I, Rap, Abram, and Adderley are all definitely gone. They're not making it to 58. Gardner Johnson? <sighs> I don't think they're using make it. Savage. Savage could be there. I'll yeah. take Savage. Wait, we already, already gave, gave him away. away. Yeah. Where'd he go, though? Did he go after 58? Yeah, he did. He, he went, went to the third. Seven, yeah, 76. So, yeah, we just have to redo 76 <laughs> now. I get to take Savage. I, we'll take Ferguson. Have to do what's realistic, and then that's Ferguson. We'll take Ferguson. And then three okay. cone, his three cone took an hour and a half. At 90? I don't know. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> uh, um, at 90... We're probably looking. If they went. We're still looking to upgrade the safety spot, right? Yep. Or are we okay because we signed Aloka. George Aloka? No, I mean, they're still going to look at safety. I, I think that they could look at tight end here, possibly. Um, you know who I wouldn't mind taking there? Who's Boring. That? Hmm. Not bad. Was that too early? I'd no. Take, I'd, I got him in the third. I think he's like 92 on my, on my top 100. I think 100. that's perfect because with. Witten and all right. these other guys here, like, okay, I get it. I'd like to find somebody to help today, but if yeah. you can't, let's just get ready for when the old man's gone and have a dynamic threat. And really, we don't we don't know how they feel about Dalton Schultz, who's the fourth round tight end last year. Do they think he can be, you know, better than what he showed as a rookie? Uh, we know he can block. Can he be a consistent pass catching threat? I wouldn't mind Warring or Isaac Nada there, even though I know Nada had a terrible forty time. If we're going to take Not Cameron Ferguson, a great 40 time. despite the worst. Three cone of all time. We can't make four nine one kick you out of the league as tight end. Are they going to take two bad testers in the top one hundred? Uh, no, we're going to take Warring. Would he run the forty? That's fine. Brian the four four six eight. Yeah, we'll take that. San Diego, no, which no, four, four six eight? seven. Which school is he? San Diego State. San Diego State. We're taking San Diego State's tight end at ninety. Yeah, uh, we just made the Cowboys better. We made everybody better, and we may have done the longest trust the tape of all time. Thanks, Dane. Everybody go like my Facebook page, Jeff Cavanaugh. Trying to grow my Facebook page. He's at DP Brugler on Twitter. I'm at JC1053. We love you. And next week, maybe we'll fix your team on Trust the Take.
Hi, this is Seth Payne. I played a long time in the NFL, and now I talk about it three times a week on the Deceptively Fast podcast. I bring you the biggest football stories in a lighthearted but in-depth manner, but also the world of health and fitness and a bunch of interviews with successful people from all walks of life. You're going to hear from current players and coaches, as well as my former teammates and experts from the national media. Subscribe today. It's the Deceptively Fast podcast on Radio.com.